This is code.org, and we're going to implement an algorithm that we developed in our reversing the array activity guide. Now, I have mine open right here. Now, pseudocode, of course, needs to be filled in. There's a lot of really good information here that helps us think through how to do this. So identify what we need, how am I going to loop, so on and so forth. And pseudocode, guys, like always, is in your own words. So there is somewhat of a standard, but it's never exact. There's not a correct way, right? So maybe for values, I write, you know, create uh, mid num it, assign it zero, which in code language would be... Uh, but again, there's not an exact way to do this. So you just want to outline your program, and it is important. This being a tutorial, I'm going to dive into code and some of the complexities, and we can think about pseudocode towards the end. Now, a few things I want to point out with this. One, it's frustrating. It is. No other way to put it. You got to reverse an array. So we're going to have to do a traditional loop. Let me head over to numprocessor and see what processes, what we got. Nothing. All right. So I am going to start out with an approach I see a lot and I dislike, but I cannot, it's not technically incorrect, I would argue. And so this is the easy way. All right. So how about we do that? How about we start with the easy way? So the easy way, which again, I dislike, is uh, I'm going to do int rev, uh, rev, and I could do rev array, maybe. Sure. And then I'm going to set this equal to... Um, new int, and then I don't know the length. So that in lies the issue, except I do. Because what we're reversing, as explained here, is this array. So whatever array we pass to our constructor, when we create a new object, my numbers, we ask it to run the constructor, standard stuff, and we pass it numbers. Numbers right here is then called values here, but it is assigned to the class instance variable of values, right? This means the classes values. This values means the local one. The argument that's passed will be represented by values. And to let the program know that the class-wide variable, this class's variable values is going to be equal to what's passed, that's what we do. So that being said, I know that the length of my new reversed array is going to be values or this dot values. It would be the same thing. The only reason we use this up here is there's a local thing also called values. I wouldn't have to here. Uh, this dot length. Okay, so bam, I have a new array. And now what I could do is loop through my old array or my current array backwards. So for int, and I'll call it index, is going to be equal to zero, right? Because indexes always start at zero. And then we want index to always be less than the values dot length, right? That way we don't go over the end and cause an error. And then index, each time I'm going to increase it by one. So index would be equal to index's old value plus one. The fancy way of writing what that is index plus plus. Bam. Okay. So here's a traditional loop. And what happens, index is set to zero. Index must always be less than the length. And we add one to index each time. So first round, index is zero. Now what I'm going to do, rev array. <laughs> I'm debating is going to be equal to uh, values dot length minus index. Or what I could say is um, int index at end at end, right? Because this is the index at the end of the array is going to be equal to values dot length minus index. Okay, so that gives us the index towards the, towards the end, which will allow us to reverse this. Index at end is going to be equal to whatever the current index is of our values away, array. Values dot index. Bam, bam, bam. Okay. Now, what this means is that we'll loop through all of the data, assign it, and be good to go. And now at this point, I could do something like values would be equal to rev... All right, and then I need to return rev array, bam. Okay, now I hate this, but let's take a look real quick. Numbers, yada, 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 print values. I'm gonna go ahead, it asks me to reverse it here. 
There we go. And then we're supposed to print it again. Bam, copy paste for that. Ah, we don't need to return it because we're reversing the values. So we're not returning it since the variable is stored up here. It doesn't really matter. We'll access it by printing it. So we reverse the values. And then when we go to print it, we access the data, the values already assigned to it in the array. So we're good. Ah, minus one is the issue here, guys, because we would start with the length, which is 10 minus the first index, which is zero. But really the first, uh, so that would be a length of 10. But remember, indexes is one less than the length. So to counteract that, to balance it, bam. And so now you can see the reversed array. Here's why I don't like this, because you're not doing it in place. I don't think this is really reversing it. You're creating a new array and assigning it. You do accomplish the same goal. So bam, that's method one. I'm going to copy it, paste it down here. I'm going to note, Mr. Kaiser doesn't like this. So reverse approach one. All right, here's the more legitimate way. So what we want to do is reverse these items in place, not create this hacky another array and then assign it at the end. To reverse them in place, we need to know the middle because we're going to grab one value from the front and assign it to the end. So let me show you actually with what we have right here. I can do values. Hmm, let me go back. I want this guy still. And so I can do values index is now going to be equal to right the end of it. So values index at end. That will work. However, we're going to go straight past the middle and we're going to get this. And so notice it's now running this, by the way, right? Because I renamed this. That's not running. I'm going to get that off my screen. Um, so notice what happens here. It works, right? I start reversing it. One, two, three, four, five. And then what happens? Uh-oh. Five, four, three, two, one. Why is that happening is because we're overwriting it as we go. So as we go, and I can, here, let's do this. Let me print it each time. So here's what's occurring, right? We start all good. Uh, this is the original. And then now we start flipping them. And so I grab the one from the end and slap it here. Grab the two from this point, slap it here. We still have eight, still have seven. But notice, once they are all gone right around here, what are we doing? Well, we're still going through it. So now we've changed these ones. Great. This is all good to go. But we're still going to be looping through. So now when we get to this point... Values at the end, these values at the end will just be getting overwritten. So a few things. We need to flip both at the same time. We can't just grab the first value and assign it to the last. We need to do the reverse as well, right? We have to know we need to do this. We have to assign the reverse as well. However, if I do this, well, wait a minute. We just already changed this values at the index to be the last value. So now I'm just resetting it to the thing we don't want. I need a temporary variable to store this so I know what the old value of index was. That way I can use it down here or what the old value of the front of this is. So I'm going to do, I and mean, you could just name this temp, but I'm going to do old value at index. Okay, and I'm going to do old value at index is going to be equal to this. And now when I flip this, that's great. I've now saved the value to this variable. And so I can go ahead and assign it here. This is not correct still. Notice what happens. We do all right up until this point. Well, not even then. Four, five, six, seven, but we keep going. So right here, I need to stop. We have successfully flipped the entire thing. Problem being is we don't stop. We keep going. We're at this index, and now we flip them again because we go all the way to the end of the ray. We want to stop in the middle. Now, we might be worried, and you should be, about what this could mean. 
So when we have an odd number or an even number, one, two, three, four, and then we have an odd number of a length, one, two, three, three, four, five. So when would I stop flipping this array? Right here, right? If I want the midpoint of this, well, the midpoint is two, right? So if I do length of this array divided by two, the midpoint's two, which is exactly where we would need to stop. I would want to flip two and four and be done. Cool. Now, how about this guy? Well, the midpoint here, where would I want to stop flipping them? I would want to stop flipping them at two also, because I can't go to three. Even the middle point is three. If I go to three, I'm going to flip it. And when, for an odd number, your middle point needs to stay the exact same. The handy thing with Java, kind of, is if I do an integer, right? So if I do length over two here, that would equal 2.5. However, if I do int, Mm -hmm. uh, we only need to calculate this once. Int mid is equal to values dot length over two. Java, if this is a decimal point, it drops the decimal no matter what. So let's say I have, let me just real quick do int x equals uh, five, right? And then let's say x over two. And what does that equal? That should equal 4.5. So let me just print it. Wait a minute, but it says two. Why is that? Because Java doesn't care. It drops the decimal. It doesn't care if it's 2.5. It doesn't care if it's 2.99999. This will become two. And I mean, here, let's do, uh, I don't know, uh, 28 over six. So this should be like 4.67. And what is it going to be? Even though it's 4.67, we're not talking about rounding. We're talking about flooring is what it's called, or it floors the number. It just drops it. So we can do this. That's what that means, values.length, because even if it is a decimal, it will drop this decimal. So the length of 5 would still give us a midpoint of 2. And that's where we would need to stop. We don't want to keep flipping values after the midpoint because we, well, you can see it here, what happens well, right there, we got the correct answer, but we're going to keep flipping values and reflip what we had already done. So now, instead of index less than the entire length, we don't want to do the whole thing. We just want to do mid. Oh, but mid should be divided by two, of course. I can get rid of this guy. And beautiful. I shouldn't be printing out each value. Bam. This is the nicer way. This is a fast, dirty way. Don't do it. Do it the right way. Flip the values. Cool. On. Yep, we got all that. Onward.